Hello, welcome to Global Business. I am Imewere Uyamokai. Today on the program, we shall be looking at three years of the Buhari economy. Of course, you know the Nigerian government celebrated its third year on the saddle on May 29, 2018. So we'll be talking with three people. You'll be hearing a financial analyst or an economic analyst. You'll be hearing a trader. Well, he's not necessarily so much of a trader. He is the president of the National Association of Nigerian Traders. And of course, you'll be hearing someone who is involved in business it's himself, Aliu Audu, talking and assessing the economy in the last three years. You want to sit back, relax, and enjoy all those views on global business. Okay, Mr. Ogochuku, you what's your assessment of the Buhari economy in the last three years? Um, the president came in when um, after, just after the politicking of the 2015 election. Thereafter, um, we saw the country the, diving into recession, and um, so far so good. The economy has really, really done very well because. The president and his economic team have been able to navigate the nation out of the recession. Even though, if we look at um, what it took the president, the time it took the president to assemble an economic team, uh, but then, generally, I think he has done very well. What about the other sectors? Let's look at the stock market, the financial sector, all the other sectors of the economy. Well, not everything has been rosy, but um, let's just look at them um, one after the other. If we look at the stock market, um, right from the inception of this government, we've seen a lot of transformation going by the policy formulation of the central bank. Uh, we saw the central bank coming up with um, the new forex uh, investment for the uh, new forex window for investors and exporters. And that policy has really, really helped the stock market because with that policy, we saw the stability of the Naira over time. With that same policy, we've seen the Nigerian stock market growing to be one of the best performing in the world. And that equally led to an excess returns of about 40%. So I think looking at the stock market, we can really say, yes, something appreciable has been done there. Let us equally look at um, the inflationary aspect. Um, you, you, if you look at the inflation, last year around January, it was around 18.7%. Um, and uh, in 15 months comparison, we've seen a drastic reduction in the inflationary rate. Today we're talking about um, a 12.5% inflation. Uh, I think, to me, that is a progression in the right trend. Now, let us equally look at, um, equally on that um, stock market um, area, we've equally seen um, billions of Naira flowing in as a result of that uh, CBN Forex uh, window. We've seen uh, money coming in as a result of a, a portfolio investment running into billions. Then if you look at um, the, the tax policy of the government, I believe the introduction of a tax amnesty has equally done a great uh, deal to the economy. How about the business environment? Looking at the business environment. Yes, looking at the business environment, uh, when we talk about uh, power, I know power is one critical thing that uh, everybody talks about. There is no business without power. But um, you will remember in 2015, though the president promised uh, generating 20,000 megawatts and distributing 20,000 megawatts, but um, so far, so good. They've been able to generate um, 7,000 megawatts at present. The distribution is at 4,000 megawatts compared to 2015 when he met the power system. You will agree with me that is tremendous improvement. In 2015, it was at uh, 3,000 megawatts distribution. But today, we're talking about a uh, generation of 7,000 megawatts and distribution of 4,000 megawatts. There is, to a great extent, there is a little past stability now. And then, going, looking at the calmness in the Niger Delta, I believe 
more will still have to be done between now and 2019. Don't forget, this is not the end of his administration. We are just looking at three years down the line, what has he done? With continuous uh, progression in the Niger Delta calmness, I believe more uh, gas production will be made and uh, the power generation will definitely increase. But he may not hit that 20,000 megawatts projection. We will see more startup business coming up. We will see more investors, foreign investment coming into the country because to a great extent that has a kind of uh, uh, created an enabling environment for business to thrive. So that policy is one policy in the right direction, which I would say, yes, it will really add more strength to the economy. Then looking at critical infrastructure, Yes, they have started, they might not be there yet, but um, you will remember the government uh, in, in, uh, during the May Day presentation uh, outlined that uh, the president had equally uh, made some uh, euro bond loan, <coughs> excuse me, issued euro bond loan, uh, issued a Sukuk uh, bond loan, and uh, with all of this, they are looking at uh, transforming the critical infrastructural aspect. first year of uh, the Buhari administration uh, wasn't quite palatable for trade uh, in terms of agriculture, in terms of industry, and in terms of commercial activities. And these are the, the, the tripod uh, subsectors of trade. Why was it so? One is that uh, there was a period when we saw dollar skyrocketing and why did it have such impact that was negative the reason is not far-fetched because
because Nigeria is import dependent. And um, the Buhari administration came in and uh, tried, you know, battling with the dollar. That's one. Two, it came up when the uh, exchange rate also had problems. Number three is that because of the policy trust of the administration, which looked at import substitution, so there was a big, big problem because the nation was, I mean, it's import dependent, and now you are bringing import substitution, which guards importation. Uh, there was a big, big problem. Many traders who were on their way, for instance, to purchase and to import into this country, first, they couldn't lay their hands on dollars. Secondly, those who were coming in met another policy on ground. It was a big, big issue. Now, but then the administration tried to manage the fiasco, the dollar fiasco. The result is that, one, it tried as much as possible to impact in some positive ways to the economy. One of the instances is that it dissuaded many traders from moving out of the country because they couldn't lay their hands on the dollars. And because of that, they retained the funds that they had. And it had pressure on the dollar to do what? To begin to sleep, to decline from all the horrendous movements. Two is that it made people to now begin to look inwards. What can we do inwards? What kind of goods can we buy and sell in country? So that capital flight would be reduced. And that's one other thing that happened. A reduction in capital flight. Many of these things came up unwittingly. Unwittingly. But it was a blessing in disguise for the economy. And the third pattern that happened was that those who were dependent, the consumers then, who were dependent on importation of food, now started looking at local alternatives. People went into farm. Then those who are farming could now see that they could also see local food to eat. Consumption patterns began to change gradually. Those who were servicing outside, you know, the shores outside, we are now turned back. The services sector, the trade and services sector in the economy also started breeding because they were now servicing those other subsectors that were inside. Now, and I'll give you an instance. Look at agriculture specifically. In 2014, Nigeria, total domestic requirement for Nigeria for rice was 6.5 million metric tons. Local production as at that point was 2.4, 2.5 million metric tons. So we had a yearning gap of almost 4 point something million metric tons per annum for importation. Today, what we are seeing is that Nigeria requires about 6.8 million metric tons because of the population that is increasing from 6.5 to 6.8 million metric tons requirement, local production now is heading towards 5 million point. So, the gap is reducing. And the ERGP, which came up, also gave us an assemblage of policy trusts and objectives, realizable objectives. And it happened so because there was a lot of, you know, communication and consultation with the actors that set the goals one of the goals, and I'm talk, still talking about one subsector, one value chain, rice, is that Nigeria will be getting out of, you know, importation of rice by 2020. And I can tell you, if we have done, gone to where, where we are from 2015 to this point, I think it is quite achievable by 2020. And therefore, to this extent, the economy 
started getting up. All indices, inflation started coming down. And today, employment also started gathering weight. Why? Because the sectors have been opened up. Agriculture has been opened up. Now, agriculture is also feeding industries with raw materials that are required. And industries are now beginning to breed. However, we are not yet there. And we need to look at policies that satisfy the people, the consumer population of Nigeria. 190, 200 million people. Take a look at what will satisfy them first. So that the yearning gap, the gap of importation will reduce the more. If it doesn't, if you open that chapter up again, then that means we'll go far away. Two, in terms of corruption, gag all the walls, prevent corruption and all the tendencies. By the time you do that, the middle class essentially, that is latently more corrupt, would not find easy money that will lead them towards such flamboyance. And of course, all of us know how much has been saved in the economy. You know, travels or for trainings, flamboyant trainings that do not merit anything, do not get any value to the nation, all of this has been cut off. So Mr. Ali Abubakar, now tell us your assessment of the Buhari administration in the last three years in terms of the economy. Okay, well looking at the economy, um, I'll first of all start with security. I think in, the terms, of, in terms of security, I think uh, they did well or they have tried because before that we had prevalence of Boko Haram bombing everywhere. 
and ever since they got up that they got into government that has changed they have brought some more sanity to the country so in terms of security i think they've tried and even though they can do more because what we want is a total uh, eradication of Boko Haram and uh, you know i will give them 80% on security coming to your economy once uh, immediately uh, the Buhari regime got into power. Obviously, they had to deal with the uh, ills of the economy and the mis-expenditure and uh, misappropriation of the economy by the previous administration. You know, they didn't do much. They were just spending. They didn't have any focus. They didn't target any any part of the, any sector of the economy. They were just reckless in expenditure, and the spillover was felt in the Buhari regime. And that's why we ran into recession and uh, we had a lot of economic problems. So uh, now that the economy has stabilized, uh, it is good. And, uh, you know, I can see that they are, uh, they ha they are trying in terms of, uh, you know, stabilizing the economy since the recession. Now, that is not where we are actually supposed to be in terms of uh, Nigeria. They are trying, but as you can see, they came in with a lot of promises. Promises to create industries, promises to bring about employment, promises to, uh, uh, to bring in a lot of social and welfare programs, and promises to grow the economy and er eradicate poverty. Now, even though we are recovering from recession. We have the, our foreign reserve growing and the economy is stabilizing from the recession. Inflation is dropping. We had 110 textile industries before. Now it's only 10 in production and it's pay, uh, it's order, pay and order basis. They don't produce, they don't, uh, produce for mass, uh, they don't do mass production. This is good. This is not good. We have a focus to move Nigeria to a country that is non-dependent on oil and total uh, and uh, uh, looking into agriculture and solid minerals depending more on agriculture and so, so, solid minerals and even tourism that's not where we are right now we're still reliant of, on oil 90 percent of our income is still on oil you cannot marry the two why a huge gdp should bring about a huge budget now that means there is some inconsistency in the economy. We are not tapping into our resources. And that's what we need to do. We have a huge market. When you have a huge market, what do you do to this huge market? You have to now support this. You have to give the market a purchasing power. You have to give the population a purchasing power. And if we have 180 million Nigerians, and you give everybody the purchasing power, or the ability to purchase goods and services, they will now go out there and purchase these goods and services, this will stimulate demand, this will stimulate production, this will increase uh, uh, manufacturing, industrialization. That is the focus we need to do. That is where we need to be going to. Give us an instance of how they can stimulate the economy and increase the purchasing power. Stimulating demand is by making money available to people, by increasing people, people giving people the ability to purchase. That means creating jobs. How do you create jobs? We don't have a railway in this country. We don't, there's 16 million housing deficit. Look at the Singaporean model. Let's start building mass housing. All the loans that we're getting from abroad, what are we using it for? Invest in housing. Invest in uh, infrastructure. This is what was done in the Great Depression in America. That's why when you go to America today, you see very big uh, universities. Those, were on the, those buildings were undertaken during the Second World War in an effort for the government to create jobs. Government started spending, building railways, building hospitals, building schools, building a lot of uh, massive infrastructure, thereby giving employment to people. And that is what we need to start doing to stimulate the economy. We need to start investing in infrastructure in a major way so that people can have uh, income. And when you have income, it does two things. It first of all reduces crime 
Because when you have income, you're focusing on your family, you can spend. And then when you spend, it increases production. Because as you're spending, people go to produce. Producers go to produce in order to satisfy demand. And that creates employment. So it's a circle. And this is what we need to do. The government needs to start spending. The money you are saving in TSA is good. It's a good thing that the government is not as wasteful as the previous administration. Let the truth be told. Now what we need to do is to channel these savings into productive uh, areas of the economy. If we, a lot of uh, Nigerians, or a lot of parastatals are corrupt, then look, seek the audience of the World Bank, seek the audience of international organizations to monitor this project, to monitor the railway projects, so that we will ensure proper implementation. We will partner with countries that we believe they can bring their expertise here and monitor this project. And when these projects are completed, they will now employ Nigerians and put them in the right path so that we can grow the economy. We need, look at China. China is, uh, you know, the second largest economy. And in the year 2030, is uh, expected to exceed Nigeria, to ex exceed America. We have the potential. Nigeria is a big market, it's a big economy. We need to tap into it. That is where the Buhari administration has stopped. They have stabilized the economy, but they need to grow the economy. We cannot remain where we are. And that's where they need to start working. And that's where we are right now. We are still at the place that we are stable. Nigerians don't need that. The population is growing. We need to grow. Well, you have heard all the views on the program. Uh, these are people who many people will say are experts. But what's your own view as an ordinary Nigerian or the Nigerian that fills the economy? Let's have your view. Send your comments to globalbusinessonait at gmail.com. That's globalbusinessonait at gmail.com. Or you can go to our Facebook page. That's Global Business on AIT. Let's have your comment there. You can have your comments on Facebook or Gmail. That's Global Business for this week. It's always nice doing business with you. Let's do business again next week. I am Imewari Okiamokai. <laughs>